What is up everyone? Welcome back to the Steve of All Trades channel. Uh, I hope that you have been enjoying some of the survival content that I've been putting out recently and I'm back with some more of it today. So today I'm going to be talking about what basically the best knives are in a survival situation. Um, obviously if you go to any outdoor store uh, they are going to have many different types of knives that are made available to you um, but Really, when it comes to camping and survival and all that, there's way too many options to really know which one is going to be uh, perfect. So I'm here to kind of help you narrow down some of those choices and know which ones at least I prefer and, and what I look for in a good knife. Now, I'll start off by talking about the three different styles of knives. Obviously, this is a Swiss Army knife and this is what I would consider a multi-tool. Here is a folding knife, and this is kind of my everyday carry. This is a, a Kershaw Brawler. And then there are fixed blade knives. This is a knife I've been working on for a while now um, to kind of take over as my primary bushcraft knife, but obviously it's not finished. So obviously the main difference between the three of these is both the multi-tool and the folding knife have folding mechanisms to them. Um, so my blade is going to pull out. There's a mechanism that allows me to open and close it as well as, you know, take these other tools out. Now, the benefits of a multi-tool is obviously you have multiple tools just in this one thing. And the nice thing about this is, especially when it comes to all the different tools you have, bottle openers, can openers, screwdrivers, a lot of things that people use their knife blade for that I really hate when they do it. But, um, you know, you'll see somebody open up a can with the edge of their knife and there goes the edge of it. You know, it's it's kind of screwed. Um, they'll try to use the tip of it as a screwdriver. Uh, you know, I don't know in a survival situation when you really need a tiny screwdriver, but, you know, the tip of your knife really isn't the best choice. But with a multi-tool, you at least have those other options of tools that you can use on this to save the edge of your blade for primary cutting tasks. The downside to this is it's obviously there's moving parts on it. There's a lot of moving parts on it. And if something breaks, then, you know, obviously the whole knife is going to start to become compromised and that could lead to safety issues. But also just holding it, you know, a Swiss Army, Swiss Army or Victorinox, um, whoever makes them now, they do a pretty good job of making these fairly comfortable. But compared to either this knife or my bushcraft knife, you know, this is the least comfortable to hold. I obviously, I have corkscrew on the back. I have all these different tools sticking out of the top. So in terms of overall comfort, this is probably the least comfortable of all the knives I'll show you today. And it's just because it has multiple tools. Um, so obviously advantages, multiple tools, disadvantages. It's not comfortable and it has a lot of moving parts that can break. Next is going to be just a simple folder knife. Um, now, one thing I make sure I keep consistent with all my knives is I keep them razor, razor sharp. So um, obviously, you know, that's very important. And why that's important is a sharp blade is way more useful than a dull blade. Because if you have a dull blade, you have to put a lot more force into something to cut it. And if that slips, if it cuts a lot faster than you think, all of your force is going into that. And you can likely stab yourself, you can likely slice yourself, or um, you know, something could go wrong. Whereas if you have a, a sharper blade, you have to put much less force into it and there's much less room for mistakes. Obviously it's a cutting piece, so there's going to be room for mistakes, but now the folding, folding knives, obviously it's the same as the multi-tool. It, it's, you know, it's, this is a lot more comfortable. It's a lot more carryable than a multi-tool is. It fits in my pocket. Obviously it has the clip here. Um, this has a speed safe technology on it. So it opens, you know, it has an automatic for quick deployment. Um, and that's even quicker than, you know, pulling a bushcraft knife out of a sheath. So for everyday carry for something that I'm going to use all the time, this is perfect. This is why I carry this knife and it's a lot smaller. So this has a lot lower profile when I'm walking around. You know, I've been carrying a knife for probably 10 years now, basically everywhere I go. And it's still a little sketchy to me to be walking around places with it in my pocket. So it would be a lot more sketchy to be walking around with a nine inch blade on me. 
So having something that folds up as small as compact, but I also have something that I can use to cut something with, open something with, or even in a worst case scenario, protect myself with. Um, this is kind of what I'm going to go to with my EDC. But as I talked about with the multi-tool, it has moving parts. If you try to baton anything with this, you're going to break the mechanisms or at least damage them. And you're going to be loosening things up that was within this. And if in reality, if you're in a survival situation, you're not gonna have a T15 screw on you to tighten that back down. So having a folding knife in a survival situation, it's better than nothing, but it's not ideal. Better for EDC, but not for really camping and survival. Now, my personal choice when I'm out in the woods, and I will specify different capacities, um, is going to be a basically a fixed blade knife. Uh, this is, obviously, uh, Camelus makes this. I bought this from, um, I believe it was either Woodcraft or Rockler, uh, and basically you slap handle, handle scales on it yourself and basically modify it to how you want. I still have to sharpen this. It has, you know, a profile to it, but it doesn't have an edge, and I want to make a custom leather sheath for this. Um, but this is going to be a lot better off for batoning, for heavy use, um, for easy sharpening, easy deployment if you have this in a sheath at your belt. Um, this is going to be a whole hell of a lot stronger for cutting tasks because there's no moving parts. There's nothing to loosen up here. It's just straight up a blade. Um, and so with that, I kind of want to talk about this is something that I would carry if I'm hiking. This is something I'd carry if I'm camping. This is something I carry if I have the intention of practicing survival skills, bushcrafting, stuff like that. Now, if I'm backpacking, then I'm not going to carry this. It's way too heavy and it's way too cumbersome, especially with a backpack on. I don't want this big thing right on my hip. In that case, I would probably carry this, if not something smaller, because if I'm backpacking, really all you need to cut when you're backpacking is, you know, a mountain house or, or a freeze dried bag open um, and maybe some moleskin with a set of scissors. This also is not a bad choice for when you're backpacking because you have multiple uh, tools on it, but also you, it's not so cumbersome and heavy like this is. So obviously there's trade-offs. This is going to be the choice um, if I'm practicing survival skills or going camping, just because it's a lot bigger, it's a lot heavier, and it's a lot more strong and rigid. And likely, you know, in this case, it's probably even a little bit sharper than my other blades. I always try to make sure that my fixed blade knives especially are sharper. Um, and one thing that I found with these folding knives is they have these little thumb studs here. And sometimes when you're trying to get a real fine edge on your knife, those touch the stone and they get in the way. And I've actually had, uh, not this one, but another one of my knives put a gouge in one of my water stones while I was trying to sharpen it. So there's also that to think about. Now. I'm going to touch on, um, obviously those are the different styles of blades. Uh, now I wanna talk, talk, talk about the different profiles of blades. So obviously for both of my EDCs, really the only reason I, I did this one is because this was a $15 knife. Um, it was on sale at Cabela's. I really got it for the price as, you know, I keep this typically in my car. As you can tell, this is half serrated, half Tonto blade. Um, this one is a full Tonto. My multi-tool is a drop point blade. And then so is my uh, bushcraft knife that I made or that I'm putting together. Um, obviously my Mora knife, it's a Scandinavian grind, but it's also, I would say this is kind of a combination between a clip point and a drop point. So that's kind of a comparison. Uh, obviously it drops forward, but if you compare it to a clip point, you know, the profile also kind of looks fairly similar. So, and then finally, this is a clip point blade. This is a SOG uh, seal pup. I got this when I was like 17 because I thought it was cool. Um, and this also has like an inch and a half of serrations on it. So I'll kind of go through the pros and cons of each. So I'll start off with a drop point blade. So drop point blade, obviously it's long. It has a nice uninterrupted blade. Um, so this is a nice long flat blade. So it's going to be very, very easy to sharpen. It's going to be very easy to cut things with because you have, you know, basically the surface area of this is a lot longer because of the profile of that blade. Um, it has a very sharp tip to it. 
and is actually very easy to control the tip itself. So if you're skinning deer or animals or anything like that, you can actually put your finger basically right here and it's going to be very easy. Whereas these bigger knives or these longer ones, you know, this clip point, it's very similar. Whereas a Tonto, it's not so easy um, and it doesn't have as good of clip or as good of tip control to it. Um, obviously, this is what's called the belly of the knife right here. This has a very large belly to it and it actually makes it very easy to slice things with. Um, obviously when you're just slicing forward as you hit that longer surface area of the belly of the knife, that's typically where things will cut through. So if you start slicing here and you end here, the belly is typically where you will finish your cut. Um, and even though I'm not the biggest fan of the practice, if you're in a survival situation, you do only have this with you. Um, if I had to choose any of these that I have on the table right now, this is going to be my choice for batoning wood. Um, so if you have to get through a larger piece of wood for a fire, if you have to get a larger piece of wood to, um, you know, put a shelter together or something like that, and you have to result to batoning because you don't have a saw, you don't have an ax, this is this is the, the one that I would choose to use. Um, now the downsides to this is, since this blade tip is so broad, it basically doesn't have a lot of penetrating power. So if you are going to, you know, in reality, in a survival situation, you might have the need to stab through a can. You might have the need to stab into an animal or something like that to protect yourself or for hunting. You know, this is a very broad tip. And since it only has a blade on one side, it's going to be harder to get through. And since that, bl that blade tip goes forward, Basically, you have to get through all of this area to cut through that doesn't have any blade to it. So it's it just doesn't have a lot of penetrating power compared to other profiles. Now, next we have the Tonto. Obviously, this is a Tonto. Um, and it's a very, very strong blade. And it's because you have all this meat of this blade spine right behind the tip of it. And it tips, you know, it basically, it goes in... Uh, you have all this meat here and then it goes in only really in the last you know maybe half an inch or so um it is very easy to sharpen obviously you have just the two well i'll say that with a grain of salt you have the two surfaces to sharpen and really all you have to do is pull back on a water stone but it is a little bit more difficult if you're using something like a work sharp or something like a spider co which i have both of those sharpeners um as you slice down or as you pull you know, obviously you have to stop at that point there so that you're not rounding it over and in time turning it into a drop point like this. So if you're using water stones for sharpening, this is very easy. Um, whereas if you're using a work sharp or you're using a, a spider code a triangle sharp maker, this can be a little bit more difficult to sharpen. Um, the only downside to this, or one of the downsides to this is it doesn't have a belly. Um, you know, it, it kind of transitions from the tip to the rest of the knife there. So it can make things, uh, slicing things a little bit more difficult, but you know, in reality, it's a pretty cool looking and pretty nice knife profile. Um, obviously I have it for both my EDCs, so I like it quite a bit. Um, and then finally we have the clip point. The reason it's called the clip point, you know, this one obviously has a few swoops to make it look fancy, but any clip point knife, any Bowie knife has this long, basically clip out of the tip of it. And that's to make it, you know, it's a fairly thin knife. Um, and so one of the downsides is because it's thin, it can be a little bit weaker than other blade profiles. Like if you just look at the two of these compared side to side, this one has a lot more beef to it than this one. But the upside to that is if you're stabbing, and this is the SOG seal pup. So this was designed for the Navy SEALs. I know a lot of companies do say that. I don't know if that's really true. If the Navy SEALs actually use this knife, um, I'd be surprised if they did, but if they do use this, um, you know, they have the purpose of stabbing, basically stabbing people with it. So having that long, thin kind of back to it, it makes stabbing and penetrating things with this a lot easier. Um, but one of the nice things of this knife, it has that long belly on it, kind of like the drop point. And if this was a flat blade, you know, obviously this is a nice long blade. So having that long belly makes slicing things very easy. Um, it's nice and thin. 
Um, so obviously it, it has some heft lower in the spine to it, but the thinness makes this very light for its size. It's easy to sharpen, um, and that's about it. So obviously I like this knife, but in terms of bushcrafting and stuff like that, I would much rather not have the serrations there. Um, and so that will kind of lead me into my next uh, little segment here. And it's flat blades, basically like this one, compared to serrated blades. Now I'll go basically, this is going to be my preference. Um, but for the serrations here, the downside to them is they take up a good amount of your blade. They're really difficult to sharpen. Um, and they really aren't all that useful. I mean, I remember, I think I've used this particular set of serrations in maybe two different situations. One was to cut a rope when I was hanging a bear bag, and the other one was to cut a very small branch off the side of a tree because I wanted to roast a marshmallow. Really not all that useful. Whereas a flat blade like this, um, this is my Mora knife, uh, this thing is way more useful and I'd rather have that first inch of the blade to be serrated or to not be serrated to be flat like this so that I can use it for batoning. I can use it for heavy slicing tasks that I need to, you know, take all the bark off the side of a uh, branch. Um, you know, in reality, this is my preference. Um, and, and with this style, you would think of your stabbing something, which this is particularly made to excel at then that blade is going to get, that serration is going to get caught on stuff. So in reality, and obviously my, my CRKT here has a different style of serrations, but if you look real close there, I started to grind off the tip of it while I'm sharpening it because it's cumbersome, it's in the way, and it takes up a lot of your blade. So if you're in the market and you're looking at a blade that has serrations and a blade that doesn't have serrations, Definitely go for one that doesn't have serrations. You get a lot more blade out of it. You're gonna use the flat part of it a lot more. Um, and in reality, you know, you get a lot more bang for your buck than something like this. I mean, obviously I got this knife for $15. I got this knife for a gift. So um, I'm not gonna sit and argue with a gift. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got a bit of knowledge about knives and that will help you with your uh, your future choices while you're perusing the knife counter. Um, but just definitely think about some of the points that I touched on. My personal choice is obviously going to be this bushcraft knife or my Mora knife anytime that I go out into the woods um, for bushcrafting tasks, for personal protection, really for anything. So um, I would say this should be your primary choice. Go with a flat blade, either a fixed blade knife um, like these two, or if you have a folding knife, the uh, Benchmade Griptilian is very nice. Spyderco makes a ton of very nice um, flat blade drop point knives, so definitely consider those. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please post them down in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer any of them. I hope you like the content. Uh, please hit the like button, and I would really appreciate if you guys subscribed. Um, I will see you guys next time.